Hey everyone! You didn't think I'd stop playing Underworld just because I finished the game, right? <laughs> I love this game. Yeah, I love the combat in this. It's one of the best combat games, tactical combat games I've played in a long time. And thus my 1010 now hours in it is a testimony to how much I enjoy it. I figured we'd do another Depot A run. It's been a long time since I did one of these, and I'm trying out another build that I came up with. Let's get in there and, uh, and see if my current character can do this. I'm a little nervous about the giant mutants, but we'll see. I think, I think we can, I think I can do it, but it's gonna be tough. So, as you can see in the upper left hand corner, I'm playing Blade today, Vampire Hunter, Vampire himself. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any vampire powers, and I've only watched the first in the series, the, uh, the movies that were made a long time ago, and I never, I didn't even realize he was actually based on a comic book character. So I, I haven't read the comic book, I know nothing about it whatsoever. But, I made him, and we're gonna try him out based on the little bit I remember on the movie. So, as usual, before we begin a Depot A run, we're gonna look at his stats, we're gonna look at his equipment, and then we're gonna get going and see if he can survive. So first, here he is, and you can see that I did actually lower a stat down to three, and just one of them. He's not, he's not completely min-maxed, and I felt kind of bad lowering his will to three, but, oh, I needed the points. <laughs> I needed the points to make him a hybrid character. So he's got a seven strength, because he is using a sword. Blade used a sword, if I recall correctly, in the movies, and so I figured, ah, he, he probably needs that. A dex of nine, because he uses a sword, and there are several sword feats which want a high dex. And in addition to that, he's gonna be a, a pistol user. Right, he used, I remember him using a variety of weapons in the Blade movie that I had watched. A shotgun, pistol, an SMG. Did he use a rocket launcher at one point as well? I can't remember. But I figured pistols and swords would be his focus, which is not really a focus, it's a spread. But we're trying it. And Dex helps lower the action point cost of pistol swings, as well as determining my accuracy of pistol swings pistol shots, as well as increasing the accuracy of my sword. So it's a bit higher than the other stats at the moment because of that. I'll tell you of six, because I want sprint. I remember Blade being able to run kind of fast, and so I really, really, really wanted sprint. He's also going to be a dodge and evade character. Thus, six agility for that. Constitution of five. He wasn't really weak. I would prefer to have a constitution higher than five, but I didn't want to lower anything else. No, I really didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Arguably, I could lower agility to five, have made him wear carrier vests, and not be, give him any you know, dodge and evasion, but no, nah, we'll let them add constitution five instead, rather than increasing that whatsoever. Perception of seven, because he's going to use pistols, and that means that he needs perception to help him hit things. This is also his helping out because we can find secrets a little bit easier with the perception of seven. Will of three, well, I don't know what to say. I, I, I don't think Blade was a very unwillful character. He, he really wanted things done his way. I would have liked to have a higher will because I would have liked to have taken intimidation. Blade looked like a really intimidating guy. But alas, it's it's not in the cards. And an intelligence of five because he's going to be doing crafting. I don't remember Blade being dumb uh, at all. So, I mean, he granted he wasn't a genius, but he wasn't, wasn't stupid. And so I think intelligence five is fine at the moment. He's going to get one more point in this so I can take some crafting feats later on in the game. For his skills, he's got some guns, 55, some melee, 55. He's a little bit dodgy and evasion, as you can see, dodge and evasion, 55 points in those as well. He is crafting as well. He's like a mechanics to help him craft pistols, carrier vests, and swords. Biology of 55 for chemicals later on. I figured this would be what his biology gives him his bonuses rather than magic, as it were. So, thus he'll be using various chemicals later on to mimic the vampire powers he had. Increased speed, agility, and stuff like that. Tailing a 55 because, well, carrier vests is what I plan to make it with him, or maybe riot, riot overcoats. I think he's wearing one of those right now, maybe, <laughs> if I remember. And so both of these are going, going to be increased to the standard levels of 110 for me. And down here in social, I gave him Mercantile. It's really handy to have extra money in the early stages of the game. It's also really handy to be able to 
to purchase special crafting gear uh, later on. This, those special choices would show up, assuming you pass a mercantile check when talking with merchants. So I gave him this. I could have given him instead maybe intimidation instead. I said it said twice there. But, oh, 55, well, I mean, it's intimidation of 55 with a will of 3. That's looking more at like a effective skill level of 40. And I wasn't that impressed with intimidation when I use it. Would have pre pre preferred persuasion, but Blades prefers to persuade people with his weapons, so he's not getting any of their social skills in Mercantile. Later on, I'll be taking uh, points of different things, but we don't care about that. We care about depot A runs. Here's current feats. Expertise, and I believe Nimble were his two starting feats, if I recall correctly, so he does extra damage with all his pistol shots and sword swings, as long as they don't crit. Gunslinger. It's a bit weird to give him, give him this, but... You'll note that when I'm walking around, his pistol is in his hand to start. This is because this increases his initiative by 7. Reducing the action cost of pistol shots by 3 is also really handy. I'm anticipating that I can probably get off 2 shots with a 9mm, and then use a drug uh, later on if I need to. Nimble, because, well, if I'm taking a dodge and evasion, you almost always want Nimble. It lets you wear light armor without any penalty and gives you extra dodge and evasion. So, M plus arm penalty reduction gives me more movement points. I really want Blade being able to run around as much as possible. To that end, he's got Sprint, which, as, uh, wow. Sprint was Gabriel, I think? Is it Gabriel? Uh, maybe I'd give it to one of my characters before. But really utilizing Sprint the almost the entire game once I had taken it with Gabriel. About halfway point through the series, actually. Wow, sprints, sprints, amazing. That can let you get out of so many situations. It's way too useful not to have it. So thus he has it. Flurry, I was kind of torn on this. The problem with flurry is that I could swear it misses a lot more often than it should. And the moment it misses, that's a lot of action points you you spent on that turn. It tends to miss for the first series of three attacks, but you'll see us using it here. You'll, you'll, you'll see. So basically, the way Flurry works is you you attack, it lets you make three attacks, and assuming that all three hits, the action point cost of this begins getting lower and lower, letting you use Flurry more and more and more often. But if any of the attacks of any of your Flurry attacks miss, Flurry goes on cooldown, and you, and you don't get the benefit of any other attacks it would have granted you. In other words, you run up to a creature, use Flurry. You hit twice, uh, you hit once the second attack misses, Flurry stops at that point. You still spent as many action points as it normally took to use Flurry, and it goes on cooldown. And Exposed Weakness, Exposed Weakness is amazing. It's one of the more powerful melee abilities. I can't imagine not using this. It's a, it's a fantastic, especially because we're going to need this when we fight the bots coming up in the area that we're going to be walking in. We don't have throwing, so I can't rely on my accuracy with thrown EMP grenades to help me. So. I will need Exposed Weakness to run up to the bots and chew, chew through their armor. For his equipment, I guess we should probably put that on. He's only got one flashbang and three EMP grenades for his belt items. No helmet yet, really? Didn't even give him a, a balaclava, huh? Oh, it's too late. We're walking in there. He's got an anti-thermic insulated overcoat that he made for himself. It's a pretty decent coat. 200% damage threshold increase against bullets and shotgun shells. It has some decent heat resistance in case we walk on some mines while we're in there. And some cold resistance, which, which doesn't really help me with where we'll be going. I don't care about stealth with him. He's not a stealthy character, so I don't mind his stealth is equal to by, four, by 48. We are immune to being set on fire. I probably should buy some Molotovs with that in mind. Well, it's too late. We're walking in there. Maybe if we get beat up a bit, I can walk out and buy some Molotovs. He's wearing a groin guard because I, I have a normal belt, but I don't have. I didn't find any other grenades. But I did find this in the water treatment plant. God, what a, what a tough area that was this time around. In any case, this reduces the chance to get hit, uh, critically hit by three percent, which is nice because it lets me use these siphoner leather tabby boots without really feeling that penalty for using them. We gain increased movement points and movement speed. Dodge and evasion increased by 29. And our action points of our sword attacks reduced by 1. The penalty for this is that the chance to get quickly hit by weapon on our attacks is increased by 1.5. However, I can see over here that we actually have a 
minus 1.5% chance to be critically hit by enemies. Look at this, look at this wonderful dodge evasion as well. 106 and 106. That's pretty, that's pretty good. We're using a 9mm hammer excited magazine, which I crafted myself. It's decent. I would always prefer using an X, what's it called? Uh, LS instead, laser sight. I don't have any electronics, I forgot. Crafting a pistol with a laser sight needs 30 points in electronics, and I I don't have those points. So we're going to have to make use with the extended magazine pistol instead. And finally, we're using a steel... <laughs> Bless me. A steel blade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Made it myself. 18 through 28 damage. Level 10 weapon, which is nice. You'll note as well that Blade is level 9, and he's halfway to level 10 already. I didn't even explore... Did I explore everything? I did. I explored every inch of Underrail before walking into Depot A. For our drugs, I've got a decent amount of stuff. I found it's two iron guts and a jumping bean and a focus stem. Those will, hopefully, those will hopefully also prove very useful for us. Alright, and let's get started. So I think to start... Have some Rat Hound Barbecue. Increasing my strength by one. Let's go in there. And say hello to the mutants. Okay, so, here we are, Depot A. I usually like starting by going off to the right and aggroing this group. That's, I know, is up ahead of us. Because there's, there's this explosive barrel. If I can cluster some dogs around it, I can kill all the dogs immediately by shooting this. Also, they're spaced a bit between the other group that will also hear the battle from, that's over here. Which means that I don't have to worry about fighting, like, ten mutants and their dogs all at once. There's also a mine or two down in this area that I'm able to uh, utilize to help me with the fight if I absolutely must run. Let's actually stop and see if my detection is good enough to see the mines. It is not. It is not. Okay, it is. I just have to stand still for a while to see them. Another one right in front of that locker. Come on, show me that. There's also one right in between those two barrels. Show me it. Show me it. I know you're there. There you go. Okay, thank you. I should point out that, of course, when I do Deep Away, it helps that I've done Deep Away so often that I'm very familiar with the general layout of where mines are, what enemies are going to be fighting in which rooms. If you're doing Deep Away blind your very first time with your, with your very first character... First off, congratulations on making it to Depot A. It's tough, assuming you haven't followed a guide or an online FAQ as to what you should be putting points in. And even then, by that I mean just building a proper character. You'll note with Blade, I don't, my points aren't really, they're in, you know, different abilities, but I haven't, I don't have like five points in throwing and ten points in crossbows with fifteen points in hacking and lockpicking. Which, in my opinion, is a fantastic way to destroy your character. You need to focus on your skills. You cannot play a jack-of-all-trades in Underrail. Oh, a tactical Jaguar. That would be worth a bit of money to sell it. That has the forward grip, which means that its spray attacks are more likely to hit enemies. Unfortunately, with the 5mm, it doesn't do very much damage. Actually, that's not true. With... With expertise, that will do decent damage with its uh, spread. And ah, uh, what am I doing? These stay open. I, I want to run in there without spending the action points. Okay. Let's start this. First, let's also quick save. Alright, mutants. Oh, doggy. How do I want to do this? How many movement points does it run over here? It's all my movement points? No. It is all my movement points. 46. If I move up... 
How many would I have left? 1550. Enough to get away. Okay. Let's let's swing at the dog. It's tempting to try for the kill. But if I do that, they're going to fire at me. And I don't want them shooting at me this round. So far, I don't think anything's alerted the, the other mutants down, muties down here to my presence. Let's move away. Oh, that dog didn't do anything, really. That killed at least two dogs, and hopefully it also injured at least one mutant. It also would have aggroed other enemies. Okay, that was the first, well, not the first shot. We did destroy that barrel. Let's show off Flurry. So, as you can see, it cost me 35 action points to use it. I have an 83% chance to hit this mutie. Oh, nice. All right, all three attacks hit him, and he's dead, and several of them crit. I now get a buff. The next time I, I use Flurry, its action points are reduced by 12. That's a dog, though. We're probably not going to be able to Flurry it. Well, this... Especially not that now that we had to use all my action points killing the dog. I was hoping we could kill it and then sprint to the next enemy. Flurry, however, is not on cooldown, so we can use it again. Hello. Where's your friend with the knife? Go around the corner to stop myself from being shot. Um, what's our chance to hit him? I'm a little worried about crippling strike, since that will lower my strength by by some points and may be unable to really use my sword effectively. Okay, that lowered the cost of a further flurry attack by eight, but that's not enough to actually hurt. I can't swing my oh, I can't swing my weapon at, at this guy. All right, let's expose weakness. We missed. Oh, oh, that's a sledgehammer, Tim. I'm out of action points. Unless I want to use some, uh... Hmm. Do I want to use an adrenaline and then a morphine? I think I do. Okay, so there we go. So that actually, Flurry let us get off four attacks total and saved us quite a bit of action points. We missed the final attack with that third Flurry here against the Junkyard Mutie, which means that now we we missed, a, we don't get a chance. I'm sorry, is that right? Yeah, that's right. We missed the third attack and now Flurry goes on cooldown. We can't use it again for three turns. However, we still have action points left. We'll kill that guy too. And I think that's it. Yeah, well done, Tim. Wasted you up morphine. That's a hideously expensive decision that you made. But I was worried. I was very worried that we would be hit by that sledgehammer. I thought I actually thought that we would also be hit by the crippling strike. That I know that beauty has. So thankfully neither of those happened. A issue sometimes people I think have with games like this, I know I have this issue, is that I tend to hold on to... Ooh, that's a decent steel cat. Wow. We'll look at that together in a little bit. Never hold on to consumables. I'm sorry. If you hold on to consumables to when you think you're going to need them, which is a fine thing to do, I tend to misjudge this, and I don't use them in situations when I know I should. That is a fantastic steel cat. That's really tempting to use this. 
but it's also it's a submachine gun. So we would not benefit from We wouldn't benefit from gunslinger. Yeah, we need a pistol in my hand. So we'll just we'll keep it. We may use it. We also need 8.6 millimeter steel. I'm um, sorry, steel ammo to actually fire it. It's worth a bit of money. So even if I don't use it, having it is nice. Oh, that crossbow's worth a oh pneumatic Zephyr crossbow. That's worth a bit of cash too. Okay. Let's leave a bit of this stuff that I don't intend to utilize in this barrel to keep my weight levels down. Okay, so let's explore this area now that I think we've cleared out all the muties. I think they're all dead. experience points for that dog collar. The sledgehammer guy I know comes from over here. He stands in this area. And, yeah, it looks like we killed them all. I think you can get a decent item from that locked box. The few times I've actually been able to open it, it's been very nice what's been inside of it, if I recall correctly. I think it's a, is it a shield in that box? It might be. We also got our a head item, so now I'm glad I didn't make anything, because we can just repair this. I put this on our head. Doesn't doesn't really do much. Arguably. Cold 10% isn't something I care about, and I'm not using intimidate, but whatever. It's something. We'll keep our head warm. Metal. 50. I can't make anything. I could make a sword with what I brought down here. Or a dagger? Let's show you a trick. So it's not very often you find metal plates. And you have the other craftable items on you to take advantage of this. But we could create a machete. right now with this. So let's do it. 16 through 27 damage. Not as good as my current weapon. However, we could then recycle that sword to give myself 72 metal bits. That brings me to now to 112 total. And I can make... Oh, we'll make some normal ones. Two normal ones, and I have almost enough to make another one. In fact... If we scrap this steel knife. Yep, we should have enough. Knives tend to give you at most like 17, 18 maybe metal scraps. For some reason, swords and spears give you a ton still. I know, so there was a balance patch that went in some time ago. Actually, I think right at the end of when I played through the game with Garrett. And that balance patch made repair kits way a pound each, with advanced ones wearing two pounds, and it doubled the amount of scrap required to make both types. So, 40 for a normal repair kit, and 80 for an advanced one. It also lowered the amount of scraps you get from most small, quote, objects, such as, such as daggers, Pistols, goggles, and the like. You could scrap a dagger and get like 130 pieces of metal scrap earlier. It was a bit too much, but oh, that nerf really hurts. Now, Blade's strength is normally 7. A 7 strength is not enough to break open ventilation shafts with a crowbar. But 8 is and so as long as we have the rat hound barbecue eaten i can run around and open the shafts blade does not have any lockpick i don't intend to give him any same thing with hacking 
But the more important thing is that without any lockpick, you can't use the on the tool to open these up. With a low strength, lower strength, you won't be able to open them with the crowbar without using some sort of food item. I think my plan for Blade is to have either a one more point in strength, an 8 strength, or raise it to 10 later so I can take bodybuilding. I think that's, that's when to lower my armor by an extra 10% of weight, uh, the armor penalty. In which case, I can ma maybe even wear a helmet on my head. And maybe drop these. Well, I do kind of like the tabby boots. We'll see. Okay, so that's all of that opened. Now I can move around here a little freer. I like to kill that junkyard mutie. I didn't have my sword equipped. It wouldn't have mattered. But I should always get used. I should always try to use it. I should have flurried. Oh, hey, machete parts. Ooh, a hawker laser sight. Very nice, but I like my pistol better. He's using a shock steel combat, or has one of those. Nice, this guy's got some decent stuff on him. Nothing in the box. Bullets in the shelf. I don't know if this is worth repairing. The shock knife would be, but I don't have any electronic repair kits. Okay. So. I think we have to have lock picking to open this door. Yes, we do. Out this way is a gun turret waiting for us, so I guess we'll stick with the vent shafts. Actually, let's go this way first. Good. I must say, sometimes there's a dog out here. Okay, we had dog heart. That was actually kind of easy, easy fight for us, wasn't it? All that dodge and evasion. That 107 is pretty good for being down here. We have, I think, more dodge and evasion than the enemies have points, at least the normal enemies, in their attack skills. Hello. It's a magazine. Shotgun frames always worth taking. We'll take all of this. So, I discovered a reason, arguably, as to why... Okay, so you should know that I use the cheat engine on occasion to speed up time. In that, the cheat engine cheat table I use, someone was good enough to provide a script, which, when you talk to a merchant, lets the merchant refresh their inventory, giving them back all the charons they had, and giving them, you know, random stuff you can buy. Well, by random, I mean what the merchant normally sells. It's normally in Underrail, you have to wait about an hour and a half I think, or an hour in between each time you, what was it, was it 45 minutes? Between each merchant visit, in order for them to refresh their inventory with new equipment for you to buy. The cheat table, the cheat engine, the only reason I use it is to take that time constraint off. This way I can just immediately cycle his inventory. Like, I'm looking for some metal, I know he sells metal, he's not selling the metal I want, or it's of a super low quality, I'm like, no. I don't feel like just waiting around in real life for an hour and a half while this merchant, until this merchant goes ahead and cycles his inventory. I'm going to go ahead and just use a cheat engine to make it happen. But I discovered that with Blade here, early on, with the shotgun plan, I can buy the shotgun parts from a merchant, make a shotgun, and sell it right back to him and make a profit. And you can do that over and over and over again, which means that technically... I have infinite money at my fingertips right now. Technically, you could have infinite money anyway, even without uh, the cheat engine, because I could just wait around and uh, until the merchant refreshes inventory and do the same thing. I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm trying not to feel bad about uh, this decision. Okay, I think we will destroy the gun turret. 
It will be damaging us a bit. I think we can just I think we can kill it. Oh. I didn't bring my armor with me. Okay, that's oh, right. We're wearing armor already, but I have another set of armor I want to wear, but it's not with me. So I'll have to, we'll, we're going to have to leave this place and go back out near the merchants. Tim, your sword is not equipped. Come on. Oh, sorry. Your, whatchamacallit is not equipped. Your pistol. That's very nice. I like the exposed weakness followed by the flurry. We've almost killed this auto turret. Ooh, that was a big critical hit. Okay, so we'll heal. Let's look. Were there any dogs that showed up? I don't see any there. Uh, no dogs. Okay. I know there are more dogs out there. I think there's three more. There's one of them. The microphone is in the middle of my table, so I can't see. Let's move that out of the way. All right. So as usual, when I have the crowbar equipped, I like running around and opening all the vents I possibly can. So we're going to do that. This is especially true because the only way I'm able to open these vents is because of my increased, temporarily increased strength. Okay, and now... Oh, Tim, there's still more. I want to open all of these because I like having the maneuverability to go into these whenever I wish. There we go. Now, there's a gun turret right around the corner, so we're going to go and destroy this one as well. Oh! No, there's not! Oh! Well, okay, then. That ladder leads up to another part of the... Oh, hello, mine. I forgot you were even there. There's a few mines around the explosive barrel. Let's not get ourselves killed by accident. Even though we will take less damage from the explosives thanks to ha having some heat resistance... I still want to avoid the mines instead of stepping on them. Go ahead and just look at all these, just to get them on the map. Hello, mutants. Hello, other mutants. So we don't have any hacking, so we're not going to be able to utilize that whatsoever. I think there's a key card somewhere in this area. Tim, your again, your pistol isn't equipped. Keep your pistol equipped to start. And I want to clear out these hallways of all the dogs. So we're going to do that now. There's no dynamite available to you early on, nor a drill, so we can't get through the, those. Oh, what the heck? Don't fire at that. How's your pistol holding up? Decent shape. Oh, sword could use repair, though. Always keep your equipment in, in high condition. High condition? Quality? Caltrops. No. I don't have any way to avoid it, stepping on them myself, and my... Huh. My boots aren't made of metal, so we can't ignore them. I don't have a feet that lets me ignore them, and my throwing is miserable. So I'm not expecting to be able to land them where I want, unless I throw them at my feet. And I'm taking lots of damage trying to get out of those caltrops, so no, we're not going to use them today. Another freaking vent. Lots of vents. 
Only two minutes left on our whatchamacallit as well, our food. Let's go ahead and just open these up then. There's a lot of vents, Tim. <laughs> There's a lot of vents. Oh, hello. So we'll check that out. That one's already open. I just want all of these opened. Thankfully, it's really quick to open these with this. All right, that should be all of them. Now, do I want to just run in and fight a bunch of mutants at the same time? Where are you, dogs? No dogs? There's more than just what? Really? Where's all the dogs? Hello, H.E. Mine. Huh. Careful, Tim. There's a few mines around here. I don't see any more dogs. I guess there were only... Th oh, we killed three? We killed three. Oh, maybe, th maybe that's all of them. That dog's coming from this room. I think there's only one dog in it. Oh, that's gonna also alert them. Okay. Well, Tim, you wanted this, apparently. Let's try killing a mutant. is armed with an assault rifle. Let's... I would like to swing at the dog. That guy's got a sledgehammer, so we got to be a little careful. We'll kill the knife guy first. No, we won't. <laughs> I don't want to use a drug yet. We'll wait around. How many hit points am I down? 60, 70. Let's take a morphine to help us here. That was probably the wrong place to move. Oh! An another dog. There's oh Tim, there's three dogs. And uh, now you're you've lost all your your lost all your dodge and evasion. We need to adrenaline watch. I need that guy dead. I'm gonna try to use this little corner to so that I can only be attacked by one dog at a time. Since they're gonna have an easy time hitting me at the moment. Our morphine's I think we're I think we're dead. No, we're not. Our morphine's about to expire.
Yeah, unfortunately, we're not going to kill this group unless I zone. Alright, good for them. Good for them. Wrong idea, moving out there and trying to take them all out. That was a really poor idea. Alright, well, whatever. Let's do this again. Oh, I wanted to fight the turret that's out here. Again, I didn't have my pistol equipped to start, but we were able to at least go first. We gotta do all this again. All of it. Ooh, that was a mine. <laughs> that was a mine, Tim. You should be careful in this location. Come on now. Look in the vents before you go down in them. Dogs are probably investigating those uh, the explosion, as are the mutants. Remember, there's a trap in this room. Okay, so let's do this again. I think the same things spawn in all of this stuff. Just Caltrops. So what happened there was a little too overconfident. I was like, oh yeah, I can, I can kill all these guys. I have good equipment on me. No, too many of them. And the Pummel guy... If the Pummel hadn't landed, we would have, I think, been able to handle all of them. But that was not the case. There's a mine in the middle of this room. There it is. Something so I think it's a dog. It was. Just one of them. Someone may have heard, though. So, the, in the water treatment plant that I did with Blade, it was different enemies this time around than what Gabriel had seen. Gabriel, I think, fought some mutants. Down there this time were dogs. A guy named Slick, a, a mutie. And among those dogs were pit bulls. There was something like, I think, five or four pit bulls? And something around like 12 total dogs down there. Pit bulls are... Oh. Oh, there's another dog. Imagine a dog. Like, well, you know, one of these dogs. Oh, you're up there. Only, instead of doing about 17 points of damage, it does about 43. <laughs> Every bite of the pit bull does as much damage as, like, three normal dog attacks. It, they're, it's absolutely nightmarish fighting them at a low level. But I was able to do it using sprint, some distance, and clever use of doors. That's the, that's the thing about dogs. I haven't learned how to open doors yet. And as long as they continue not to do, not to learn, we will be fine. Or rather... They can't open doors that have handles. I guess you could say they can't get a handle on how to... Oh, they can't handle doors. Aha! Yep, I said that out loud. Let's go ahead and check this. Open all the vents, just like we did last time. And this time, 
we won't suck at fighting the muties in these rooms. I promise. We're gonna take them out one at a time, which is what I should be doing. I'd like to know where that sledgehammer guy is as well. He's the one I'm really worried about. Also make sure. Oh, yeah, make sure there's no more mines that I. Oh, sorry, I'm aware of where all the mines are. There's no more dogs out here. I don't see anything. Let's move a little bit up here. A tiny bit, looking for more traps. Good enough. All right, let's do this. Huh. I know there's mutants in the corners, so. No, not mutants, muties. That's the guy with the assault rifle. If I stay here, he'll block the others from reaching me. So I'll I'll stay here. Our armor will protect. Oh, <laughs> or or not, Tim. <laughs> that guy had crippling strike. He was really annoying. Let's move away. And you do not have crippling strike. You would you would have totally used it there. I'm hiding from the assault rifle guy. There's no reason why we have to take those shots. Oh, he moved up first. All right, well, that works for us. All right, one of the two rooms cleared out. the dogs will have to worry about. Low camera. No one's watching you, so we don't get any enemies by leaving you alone. Not that I don't have to destroy you, in other words. A named pistol, or, M or some machine gun. We'll take a look at it in a bit. Combat gloves, 76 digging coins, and a security key card. Anything in the desk today? Brass knuckles. I don't need those though. We're not a. Well, although we are melee, I'm a sword user. I've got lots of feats that use them. So this is a 9mm submachine gun. Oh, that's tempting. It is better than the Steel Cat. That burst precision makes it very nice. Yeah, I think it is better. But I still prefer using my pistol over it. Let's also go ahead and recycle some of this crap so we don't need the daggers. That's a decent steel. Oh, there's a, this is another 8.6 steel cat. That's worth a decent amount. We should actually repair it. This crossbow, though, is junk. We'll scrap that. We have another Electric knife. Wow, the mutants are really well armed today. The mutants are really well armed today. Okay, Blade's food has expired. I think we'll go ahead and have a stuffed bat. So we're going to wrap up this area. Then we'll go down here, say hello to the Black Eels really quick, and then... And then we'll go back upstairs and explore another area. Upstairs? Outside. And explore a different area. The problem with this room, I hate this room. 
is that it, actually we have to spend action points to open this door, and then we're thrust into combat, and we're down 25 action points. So let's just do this now. You see everyone? Hello, everyone. And we sprint around the corner. Oh, is that the way that works? Can I actually do that? That's the first time I've ever done that. So if you open the door in combat and get away, no one realizes you actually opened that door. That's pretty interesting. That's really interesting. That's good to know. Okay. Let's wait till Sprint's off cooldown, and then we'll actually just walk up and deal with all these mutants. Amutes, sorry. Oh! I think something saw you, Tim. You weren't quite ready. Sprint was, Sprint was not off cooldown. Maybe the only one to see me was a dog? Nope, there are others here too. There's a sledgehammer guy. Okay, so far this is looking pretty good. Pretty easy. Don't want to be tackled. We can now sprint and we'll round the corner. If we're lucky, they'll all group up around this explosive barrel. Perfect, okay. So I believe, let's make sure we're not in too close to it. If we can shoot the barrel, we'll detonate it, and it'll blow up this mine, and it will damage both this, both of these mutants. It did not, and in fact, reach the mine. I was wrong, okay. Perfect. He's exactly where we wanted to be. Cut him up. Around the corner again, keeping out of line of sight. Okay, we, we want to kill this guy because he's got the assault rifle, so let's focus on him first. I don't know why you did that. You're still dying. I'm so sorry. Another electric knife! What the heck? I mean, that's great. Uh, I could use the money. Right, let's see what we got. So, we have a sledgehammer that we know we don't need. Scrap it. All normal knives get scrapped. Oh, this one's actually really kind of garbage. This is as low as I think I've seen a shock knife. Yeah, that's the, that's the lowest level shock knife I've ever seen. I think I'd rather actually have the 11 scraps. Oh, I can't even take it, because we need electronics. All right, very well. This, an 8.6 millimeter Marauder. That's pretty decent, too. Yeah, there are some decent weaponry down here today. No, no 5 millimeter tacticals on them today. No, no shots that I can simply laugh at. They're using some decent guns. Okay, so we're going to go back now to the shopkeeper. Because I think I know where I left my armor. I think every one of these I've recorded so far, I have managed to forget something with that character. And need to go and pick it up or buy it. So I guess I can do this off screen. So I'll be right back, everyone. How... Embarrassing. <laughs> I sold my armor. I must have, because I couldn't find it after an hour of running around looking for it. <laughs> I had a around a level 7 suit of siphoner armor to wear in here. And I it's not 
It's not in any place I would have stored it. So, I need to wait for the siphoners to respawn. And that will take some time. So, while I'm waiting for them to respawn... I did have some mutant dog leather armor. That was good enough to drop off of the gentleman outside of the burrower tunnels slightly to the west of junkyard and it just occurs to me that i mentioned earlier that i have explored everything before junkyard today but i'm so, sorry before depot a but that is not that is not the case actually there's several locations i can still explore um i could actually be level 10 right now but we're about to be level 10 in any case uh, i've decided that we're going to go ahead and go into this section next do a little more exploring. We're going to wear our mutant dog leather armor once I'm past the minefield. That's the, that will be in front of us. Man, it's the first time I've actually. Act I'm usually very careful when it comes to selling armor with backup saves. What, especially if I have if I have some armor on me that. I crafted for a particular reason, especially for Depot A, with some acid resistance. Especially Siphoner Leather. That was quality 54 leather, which is... It's not the the, the highest I think I've ever gotten from a Siphoner that I've killed. The normal Siphoner is quality 63. This one was quality 54. So, again, not the absolute best, but still good. And I got another pair of quality, I think, 32, which is what I made the boots out of. So the fact that I sold the higher quality armor... That's, uh, that's annoying to me. Get embarrassing. Very embarrassing. And we don't want to go that way. Okay, so. In this area, we have two auto turrets, and I think four mutated dogs. The dogs are when you start having trouble with a character, because you get to learn about resistances the hard way. <laughs> you also get to learn... About if you put any points in dodge and evasion, and you get rooted or stunned or stopped from being able to move like a trap, you lose your dodge and evasion, and then you're killed very quickly. So we're going to wear our mutated dog leather armor here. This also means we're, we can take tons of damage from that auto turret. We're going to wear this at the moment. Uh oh, can't in combat at this time. Okay. We want to try to aggro the dogs, but not the gun. Dogs are, all the dogs start back behind the gun in this area. And we did not get lucky enough. We oh, lucky enough. I don't have a perception high enough to see the secret door here. Increasing your perception, by the way, to my knowledge, through miscellaneous equipment, will not let you see secrets. To my, to the best of my knowledge, to find a secret, you must have the actual perception on your character stat without any bonuses to raise it to that level. Food, goggles, anything of that sort that raises your perception doesn't help you find a secret. There's a secret door here, which would normally let us access the back section of this area, but we can't find it. We did find a key card. So we'll use this key card to unlock the underpasses transition door. Change to unlocked, and we'll open up the inner depot auxiliary entrance. At least we'll unlock them. Lock picking, we're not opening that. Metal helmet, we'll just sell that. So I also took the opportunity, as long as I was running around, I was like, holy crap, really? I sold a bunch of crap that I had. So we have a, I have a few more Charons now with Blade. 2,400 already. Wow, my goodness, he is quite rich. How can I do this? I want to aggro the dogs. I don't even see the dogs at the moment. If I start shooting, that will draw the dogs to me. Uh, 
Okay, yep, and here they are. There's at least one. Alright, perfect. We've got two of them. Better chance for us to actually hit them in melee combat. Nice. Two good hits. Let's sprint and round the corner. I think they both can still reach me. Okay. They can, but thankfully we were not rooted in place. And now we've leveled. Perfect. Let's get out of the acid. Oh, we're entangled. Okay. So, we've lost all our dodge and evasion now. Is that right? Oh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't say we lost our dodge and evasion. Let's look at our let's look at this. We did though. We totally did. No dodge, no evasion. Even though acid entanglement doesn't say that, it is the case. Okay. And we missed our flurry attack as well. Oh, you know, maybe we'll get some decent quality mutated dog leather out of this. And we'll use that instead of the siphoner. Siphoner leather is a uh, preferred over mutated dog. Mutated dog gives you more, to my knowledge, mechanical resistance than mutated than the leather than the siphoner leather does. But siphoner leather gives you dodge and evasion, which is very important with a dodge and evasion character. You want as much of that as you can get. And we leveled. That's amazing. So. I need to go look at my my character build for Blade. Now, normally, when I do Deep OA, I'm level 8, maybe just reach level 9. But with the additional quests that can show up here, with the water treatment facility, you can probably be as you could, as you saw me with Blade if you explore every inch of the every inch of Underrail before doing Deep OA, be level about nine and a half, and that's that's without farming anything. I didn't I didn't run around and kill things multiple times. I I do want to do that for the siphoners, but I didn't go out, go out and farm creatures to abuse experience points. I just explored every place I could once. I was able to beat the challenges that awaited me in those locations. Just point it out so this way you don't think that I'm farming experience points to be make myself artificially higher level than I actually am. That's not the case. I'm not muted, right? I'm not muted. I'm recording? I am recording. Okay. Alright, so, let's load my level 10. Oh! Nope! Well, that's a bit awkward. <laughs> now we have to do this again. Let's see, let's go here, load that, load level 12 blade. Okay, so, we still take five points to all these skills. I think this is probably one of the highest levels I have been when doing Deep OA. When I play a character on Audi mode, I might be lucky enough to end Deep OA at level 10. But sometimes I'm only level 9. I just didn't get lucky with the with the one or two random spawns of the Audi items on the on the creatures we kill. Which is another reason why I prefer playing classic mode. And what feat am I taking? Rapid fire. Okay, rapid fire. Let's take you. Set that same could also be good. I but those are the two feats are going next to give my pistols some use. Where are you? Rapid fire. Rapid fire. Grant you the ability to rapidly fire three bullets from firearm pistols, SMGs, and assault rifles at a reduced precision. For 150% action point cost of a regular attack. Maybe I don't want that. <laughs> Not to start. Maybe I do want Steadfast Aim. Because we'll benefit from that even during, I think, the other. Um, hold on. Even during Rapid Fire. Let's see. Steadfast Aim. Increases critical hit chance with a pistol by 0.5% for each base action point required to fire it above 10. And I think that would affect my shots with Rapid Fire. So we should take this first. Done. Okay, so what's my chance to quit with this pistol now? 15%! Not bad. If I had other pistols, I could maybe see what the difference was, because it depends upon the pistol that I'm firing. This is SMG. 
only 5% chance. This normally has a 7% chance, so we picked up 8% chance to crit. Just basic, holding the 9mm in our hand. Okay, good. So that was two of the dogs defeated. There's two more left, though. It's going to be a bit tricky. We'll try this. It's very dangerous. I find it very dangerous to fight the mutants themselves, mutated dogs and the giant mutants, without wearing acid equipment, acid resistance equipment. So I'm a little nervous firing at the gun. But it looks like we're not going to get the dogs. They're not hearing the, the shots being fired. Which is just as well because I'm, I'm not being very accurate today. I can also swear all I want, not playing Gabriel. <laughs> that that jar, that donation jar. Wow! <laughs> that do that donation jar has been donated already. There you go, and you can find 19 damage on a critical hit. We did more damage with our normal shot. Wow, we've got like a 50% hit rate. So frustrating. The good news, though, is that obviously it's not getting a chance to shoot at us, so it's. Come on! What's what's my hit rate? Like thirty percent? Apparently, we went through an entire thing, an entire thing, entire clip, and almost half of another one. Destroy a single turret with a 70-71% 70, hit hit chance on it. My god, terrible. Of course, it doesn't help that my perception is only 7. So, arguably, I have myself to blame for this. But I could swear, even a 95% chance is not a 95% chance in this game. There's, now, there's another... Oh, Tim. Yeah, I just realized I, I shut that door. I needed, to do, I needed to leave that door open because I might need to run into it. Okay, so we do the same thing with that turret now. Every four shots, I'm expecting to miss once. Not every, not expecting to hit every fourth shot. So come on, game. You can give me the odds at least once. There you go. That's a decent critical hit. 52 damage. Okay, now, there is a mine in that area. Hopefully we'll see it. I think the dogs can activate it. I don't think they're aware of where it is. My goodness, that was an expensive two auto turrets. But I didn't want to run up with, to them with the sword. Much more efficient to do that. There's a dog. Hello, dog. Shoot you, maybe. And we're entangled. Just have to wait for the dog to show up. Wow! Good, big critical hit in the dogs. Dogs attack immediately. Heal herself. I came and searched the remains of my feet because I'm entangled. Come on. Don't do that to me. All right. Let's back into this really quick. And look at this mutated dog leather I've been picking up. Mutated dog leather. Leather armor. What, what quality is it? 34. Oh, we need chemistry to utilize this. Okay. That's a shame. 
I don't have any chemistry. This is actually decent mutated dog leather right here as well. Quality 58. It's pretty good. I don't have any chemistry. So, we cannot make leather armor out of it at the moment. Chemistry is in the cards for Blade. Um, my, my build at least, but not until he's like level 22. So it's not something I'll be taking. I don't think I'll need any acid glands. Oh, hold on. I do have some ampules with me, so I can extract humors today. No, I can't. You know, still have any chemistry, Tim. Wait, what? Why is it 35 biology, but then it's 35 chemistry here? Which is it? Which is it? Uh, it's obviously chemistry. Or is it? No, it's not. No, 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 no. You're being a dummy, Tim. It's 35 biology to be able to create the acid, which requires a 35 chemistry for you to use. So biology to understand the animal part, and then chemistry to use the acid that gets created after it. Okay. I guess that makes sense. You know how to extract the acid, but you don't know how to use it? How's your armor holding up? The tricky thing about armor and acid is that every time you take a tick of damage that has a chance, even zeros I think, have a ch is that right? No, it has to be actual damage. It will begin to slowly erode that armor, making it less effective, which means that you have a better chance of taking damage, and so on. So it's a little bit of a spiral going on. There you go, two nice hits. Take that, dog. And you can't shoot through the, f oh, you can shoot through the fence? <laughs> How does that work? Would the blob kind of like, it ooh, there's another dog too. That dog, though, didn't see us. Hello, doggy. I know you're running the corner at me. There you are. Hello. All right. Let's try. Ugh. That fail try flurry. <sighs> Kill! Nice. Two critical hits with the sword right there. Okay. So, we might as well continue to break down the bits. They weigh a lot less after we've converted them into liquid form. Oh, some Raihound barbecue just sitting in a shelf here. I'm sure that's still tasty. A poppy seed. That's helpful, too. A spear. Level 6. That's not so bad. If you didn't have crafting, that probably would be better than whatever you had purchased from the earlier merchants. So I want to process plant or animal. And then we'll go ahead and create a morphine shot with this as well. Morphine's really expensive, especially early on, early on, so, well, then again, I already have almost 3,000 Charons with Blade. So it hasn't been that much of an issue with him, early money. I have a key card for that, so we're not opening it. I think we've, I think I know where this goes, right? This goes to a place we've been already? It does, okay, we've been here before. But I believe this is now unlocked. Nope! That would be incorrect. Oh! I almost forgot about the black eels. Let's go and say hello to them. So, I've already completed all the black eel quests with the exception of, hel of helping them raid the... 
Uh, should I mention it? Yeah, sure, why not? Well, I'm assuming you're watching this, and there's going to be spoilers, right? So, the Black Eels have a quest line, which is helping them overthrow the Scrappers, so they and they alone take over Junkyard. If you do some quests for them, then they allow you to enter what they call the hole, which is this area to access Junkyard, if you complete your quest line. If you do most of the quests for the Scrappers... Actually, well, uh, it's not completing your quest line, Tim. I think that's good enough. Yeah, so... Mm, I, yeah, I'm messing this up. There's two quests for the Scrappers and two quests for the Black Eels. You, when you complete both quests for the Scrappers, they give you access to the Junkyard through the main entrance. When you complete the two quests for the Black Eels, they give you access junk to the Junkyard through this entrance instead. There's a third quest for both of them. The Scrappers, it's find out where the Black Eels are coming from, how they're sneaking into the... to Depot A. And then when we go and tell them, they'll collapse this tunnel, stopping them from actually being able to enter it. The Black Eels have a quest, which is overthrow the Scrappers entirely. It culminates with you with a big battle going on, which you're a part of, and I think also members of the Protectorate join in to help you. And, well, that overthrows the Scrappers, removes them from the game. I think you might lose access to a merchant, but you gain access to another merchant in the Underreal Underpassages. Oh! I don't have the key for this? I must not have searched something down below. There must be a body or something I've forgotten about. Maybe this keycard team is using this other terminal down here, and that opens this door. Mm. It's been a while since I did Depot A. Last time I did it with, was with Gabriel. We searched everything. Oh, I did not search that room. Okay, there'll be a key down there, I think, that we need. But let's see if I can at least access the security terminal. Nope, cannot do that. That's locked, so I can't open that door to access this ventilation shaft. That'll bring us to the area here, which is filled with robots. I don't need, I don't need that armor from going into this room. Locked. There's the key we need. I think that's the key to the chain link fence up above, but we'll try opening this with it. That looks like a key carded door, though. Okay, so. I've got, uh, do I want to, yeah, let's, so I'm going to double back to the Siphoner Lagoon really quick. It'll take me like two minutes, and we're going to see if the Siphoners are back. They might be. They're probably not. But they might be. And if they are, I want some Siphoner leather. I forgot all about the fact we did dog leather requires chemistry. I actually thought it was a siphoner leather that requires chemistry for you to to make armor out of it. That seems a bit mean to me, making you require chemistry on a character who is taking tailoring to make leather armor, only to find out that you can't make armor that gives you resistances against acid because you don't have acid, that's uh, right, chemical skill technology. But I guess it makes sense thematically. 
as to why you need it, because you need to know, I guess, how to best utilize the skin to get that chemical resistance. You need more chemical skill also, depending upon the quality of the leather. We're almost there, everyone. This won't take too long. And hopefully, if they have respawned, we'll be able to get some leather from them. There's no guarantee any of the siphoners will drop leather uh, for you. I should know right away, if I walk in there and the poppy has respawned, I think that means that I should see siphoners. If the poppy hasn't, I'll still check two spots and then we'll have to leave. Nope, Poppy has not respawned, so I don't think the Siphoners are back either. Let's see. Nope, no Siphoners. Okay. Darn it, this really freaking sucks. You have to wait around like two hours in real life time to have the Siphoners respawn. So, there's one Siphoner in a different tunnel, but I'm not gonna go down there. It's like, it's like a, take me like 10 minutes. Seven, eight minutes to get there, maybe ten, twelve, depending upon what else we spawned. It's just not worth it. We'll do it with we'll do this area with the mutated dog armor. I suppose that's probably better. Although I'm not utilizing my technology thanks to a horrific mistake I made. We will at least show that it's possible to do this area just with the mutated dog leather that we found earlier. There's a few people who like thugs, thieves. That have a chance to drop this armor, and if you can, if you can get it, it's it's really phenomenally useful to to have it for Depot A. Oh, I'm carrying a lot of crap as well. We should leave this stuff over here. So I don't need the leather. That will get rid of quite a bit of weight. We can extract the humor. Sir. Okay, and we'll want some decks this time around. I'll make my firing of our pistol even cheaper, action point wise, but that will, I think. Oh! It did not actually reduce my critical chance either. What's my critical chance with this gun normally? Seven, yeah. That's interesting. Ten decks should have lowered, my, I thought, my the action point cost of firing the pistol. Oh. Yeah? I found the secret entrance at the old junkyard. Wait, why, why am I reading this out loud? No one cares. We get some money, I get some experience points. And now the Black Eels cannot use that to ambush the Scrappers. I tend to always choose that as the best option. My experience with the Black Eels has always been poor. They tend to push people around a lot more, it seems to me, than the Scrappers do. Oh, actually, that's not true. I guess they both do it the same amount equally. Alright. Time for some beans. So this is what I'm nervous about. If this is too difficult, I will have to wait for the Siphoners to respawn so I can kill them for their, their leather. But I'm hoping we'll be able to do this without requiring that. So there's, there's first, there's a dead body around the corner. And that body will have a very damaged high-level weapon of some sort. It's a sniper rifle today. A level 10 Reaper... Co oh, no, that's an assault rifle? No, it's a sniper rifle. Woo! It's a... That's a decent weapon. That's a very nice sniper rifle for this early game. We are, of course, and look, also, I want to point something out. Its durability is 52, and it's still worth 3,176 bucks. This means that fully repaired, this thing's worth probably close to 11,000 or 14,000? Let's see. 16,536 value on that Reaper. That's amazing. And the armor hot garbage, so we can break down that at least. Yeah. 
Okay, well, so much for getting like an electrical machete or something of the sort, but the, the sniper rifle is worth quite a bit of money. Alright, well, how to do this. So, I want to kill the dogs first. Because I don't want to get at acid entanglement. And I don't want to fire my pistol if I can avoid it. Oh, Tim, the mute, the big mutant saw you. And we're probably dead. <laughs> we are probably dead, because I am rooted, and that is a giant mutant. We'll use a morphine shot. We have to kill the little one. The mutant dog. Because I don't want to get another acid entanglement on me next turn. Let's try for it. We need to heal, or when the morphine expires, we're going to die. That was a very nice crit. We will sprint... Now, I heard a curtain open, so a mutant heard this fight, and he is on the way to investigate. Another giant one, like just like this guy. I'm okay with that. The door is locked, to my recollection, as well. Nice. Oh no, I'm out of I'm out of bandages. <laughs> that's that's really bad. It means I have to wait for my medical hypos to cool down before I can heal again. And there's an angry mutant on the way. He's gonna round the corner. Here he is. Okay. I still don't want to shoot because there's at least two to three more mutant dogs and another mutant in the area. So we're just going to wait. Hope he doesn't kill us. He did not quite kill us. He did scream, though. That may get their attention. Okay, looks like we're safe. Woo! Woo! All right, I was nervous about that. We survived, thank God. Our armor is a little damaged. Oh, what, what's here? A dog. Oh, two dogs. And I'm not gonna hit them very much today, it seems. And we're entangled. Oh, three dogs. Oh, we're, we're doomed. If we have entanglement on us, this is, this is looking really bad. Yep, we're, we're, we're dead. Okay, maybe we can run. Maybe we can run away. I would like to kill the dogs, though. While we avoid the giant guy. Oh! Need to heal. Okay, we are exhausted. We're just gonna we're just gonna run. We're not gonna fight him. I wanna wait till our exhaustion ends or we can heal again. 
That's fine. Our mutated dog leather armor will protect us against all that acid damage. Okay, we are no longer slowed. Take a single swing at him and move away. He won't have the action points to reach us. And every time we hit him, we're going to lower his action points by two. Thanks to our sword. And I don't want to use flurry. I, I, it's not going to be phrase. I love to use flurry. But we might die if I stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with this mutant. So we hit him lightly. Over and over and over again. Be greedy, Tim. Keep keep the effect on him. Carved up. Okay. Done. Woo! Oh, that was really tough. I need to actually go and pick up some bandages. We need some bandages pretty badly because I'm going to run through all of my healing hypos at this rate if I don't go and pick them up. How's our armor? A little more damaged. Some really decent quality mutated dog leather armor. 54, uh, sorry, 59, 58. It's a shame I don't have any chemistry. But I refuse to put points into it early. Well, what would I drop? I guess mercantile. But that's just five points. And the technologies? Oh, I guess we could have done that. Too late now, though. All right, so... Let's break down some of this stuff. I do not need all these acid glands. And that should have been all of them. I think that was pretty much every single creature in this area. Goggles, which are garbage. A fusion cell, which we'll take. I'm going to risk wearing our explosive protection armor now. Oh, good crossbow. Scoped hurricane. Definitely take an EMP grenade. We'll use them down below. Blueprint, which was this? A bear trap blueprint. I always take and read all the blueprints. I'm pretty sure it isn't the case what I'm about to say next, but just in case it is. Um, I, I, I want to say the game gives you blueprints that you don't already possess or it tends to lean in that direction. It certainly seems like I find the blueprints aren't really r random because I find more and more blueprints that I don't know for my characters. Today. Nothing in the shelf. Oh, I didn't fully explore the mutated dog area, Tim. I don't think you did. Yeah, you did not. You left some, some unexplored rooms here. This. Totally hasn't been searched. And I'll, I wanted to search that. But I don't think we can get the good item that's in there. I think there is... I usually find an energy shield in that area. In a locked cabinet. I suppose we should talk about character builds for a tiny bit. You'll note that Blade doesn't have lockpick or hacking. When I first started playing this game, every character I would make had both of those things. There is a good amount of loot inside lockers and hack hack hackable containers. Things that the ooh, quality 63 assault rifle frame. Things that those unlock, they can contain some nice things in there for you. But, 
you don't need them, with the exception if you're playing Oddity Mode. Oddity Mode, being able to access locked containers, will, will give you access to some earlier oddities that you would otherwise have to wait till later in the game to get. In other words, uh, like, you might find one or two more mutated barrels. This right here. I think there might be one, maybe a second, maybe, in a locked container in this area. But you'll still find, I think, all four if you didn't take lock picking or hacking. There is, I want to say, one, at least one or two. Well, obviously, if it's one of them, it's probably more. Oddy items which are kept behind a locked or hackable container or doorway that you need to open to access it. And they're unique ones. I think, for example, in the core tech facility, factory, near um, later in the game, there is a, a free point on the item might be four points actually that looks like a cyber module from system shock 2 and the only way i think you can get that is if you have hacking you won't get it otherwise all right and it looks like i'm not going to really need the siphoner leather this has been good enough for us i'm sorry not that this Again, even a little bit of acid damage goes such a long way in fighting these creatures. It means you can stand. You can stand in the acid and not take damage. I guess another thing you could do... Well, it's not as helpful. But there's Surefoot. I think that's what it's called. It makes you immune to acid puddles. It means that as you stand in them, you don't have to worry about taking any damage. Any of that stuff. I guess I should... Break the vent shafts. I think there's... I think there's whatchamacallits in these... In these vents. Oh, rat hounds. Not strong enough. I need to eat the food. We're not going to do that yet, then. Oh, I didn't explore that one... Red area. Can I kill the bot in one go? Oh, not with two of them here, Tim. Oh, well, you still can kill that bot in one go. That. We don't have a helmet on Blade, so he gets blinded all the time. So, exposed weakness is on cooldown. So, I will run away and wait for that to come off cooldown. Actually, they're both together. Let's sprint. Charge them. And point blank a grenade. We're not wearing anything that has any charge, so I don't care about being hit by my own grenade. Nice. That was a piece of cake. So, hello, trap. I don't have any normal grenades. A EMP grenade will not set off explosive traps. I think it might set off EMP... E e uh, mo traps. Mines. I think it might set off EMP mines, though, but don't quote me on that. It might not do that either. I think that's all the random... I thought there was more than that, though. Uh, what am I talking about? Uh, the security bots. I think we killed all the ones that are driving around looking for enemies. I think there's two more in a room over on this side, if I recall correctly. Oh, careful, Tim. There's a mine in here somewhere. There it is. Okay. Blueprint, advanced health hypo. Hey, wow. Nice to get that so early. It's not going to matter. Not for Blade. He won't need to ever make one of those. He'll have enough cash. He can just purchase them. Oh, 
Oh, sure. Here I am. Come get me, bots. I should send two of them out here to investigate. Yep, here they are. All right, I would I'd like to kill one of these because if we don't kill it, we're gonna get shocked. Nice. Unfortunately, we're going to probably be flash banged, and there's not much I can do about that. Almost got you. Alright, not bad. That was all the security bots in this area. So something else this area tries to teach you is the importance of wearing armor against certain enemies. We wear the acid armor against the mutants that can hit us with acid damage, and we wear this armor with our 200% increased damage threshold, that's the number, I believe not the percentage, against bullet and shotgun shells. These enemies are, you think, are using... What type of bullets are they using again? I think they're... It's not 9 millimeters, right? They're using, I think, 7.62? And so, this will absorb the vast majority of the damage done to us. Because that's going to be 21 points of damage threshold. It's got to exceed to put even a single point of damage on us. Yeah, there are rat hounds inside the vents in this area. Okay, so... We have two auto turrets and a key that we need, a key card, in that room. There's also a gun turret in this room, and a mine in there that I usually almost always hit. I think we'll charge these today. I think we should be okay. So let's do it. Now we sprint. I want to sprint straight up the middle. in full view of them. My plan is to throw an EMP grenade right at our feet. It should affect both of them. Then we can round the corner. That's a shame. We missed with the final one of one of those. So Flurry's now on cooldown again. Uh, we'll wait till next round to use the exposed weakness. I'll get more attacks that way. All right, well done. Oh, these these use nine millimeters. I can see that based on the ammo we're picking up. All right, let's repair our weapons. Probably damaged. Oh, badly damaged, actually. I don't have any more advanced repair kits. I used them on that sniper rifle. All right, there we go. Pistols in great shape. Armor's in good shape. Groin guard's in good shape. Boots are in okay shape. There's a mine, right? Yeah, there you go. There you go. A little mine. Molotov cocktail, huh? Also, I don't need these flares. Not so many of them, at least. Hmm. Well, we're not. there's no more guns. So we might as well equip this instead. We are immune to being set on fire, so we can use that point blank on us if we get attacked by... surrounded by mutants upstairs. Okay, well, let's explore more of this area. So we're gonna want this equipped. Not strong, oh, I thought I ate the food. Hmm. 
all these lead to the same room you were in earlier, Tim. There's not gonna be nothing in them. Nothing of importance, at least. I've already taken everything that I want from those rooms. Nothing down there either. Now, oh, there is a security bot left. Okay, let's kill it. I love security bots. Such bots. And this, of course, is teaching you about the importance of not being incapacitated. That was a piece of cake. Another key card. One of these has a lot of food in it, if I recall correctly. There it is. A bacon cheeseburger. Mmm, mmm. 20 more health. Where's it? 40. We should always take the bullets. They're worth money. Oh, that was unlocked this whole time. Okay, whatever. I haven't found any watch my in the in the vents here. Rat hounds? I thought there were rat hounds in this though. Okay, we should totally take this. This will lead us back to the other area where those muties killed us. Because I think we can access a room that we couldn't access earlier because we need we need lock picking to get into it. But we can access it from this side. And I think there's a locker in there that's not locked that contains maybe a, a something you use you might want. I don't remember. You would be in well maybe, but it's it requires hacking and we don't have that either. So what have we learned today, everyone? So we've learned, first off, don't sell your your siphoner leather armor if you made it. Don't do it. But we have learned that even the mutated dog leather that you can find or create if you have chemistry as well will enable you to tank damage in this area that you would otherwise slaughter you. We should have died if we weren't wearing that mutated dog... Well, not should have. We would have died... So oh, man, so many times to those mutants and the mutated dogs earlier. The armor is extremely helpful. Is there anything else like that later in the game? There's a, there's a few places where knowing what type of armor to wear is very helpful. So... Uh, for example, when you see toxic gas around, I will usually go and fetch some armor that has bioresistance. This way I don't take significant amounts of damage walking through it. The same is true for when I'm in the DLC and I'm fighting hornets, or not, not hornets, sorry, locusts. Uh, those things are also frightfully annoying because they do bio damage. Uh, they stack a ton of it on you. There's also a lot of bio damage coming from the serpents that spit at you. So having some bio resistance there can be very helpful. Okay, so... I guess we'll deal with the last two, two auto turrets. And then we'll go back up, uh, up outside. I also want to check these rooms. So to do that, we have to open this door. So we don't want to rush them. Oh, there's a there's a security bot in that in there too, Tim. The security bot will come out after us. There's a mine in that room, which is why I am not going into it. 
because I always I always walk on it. I never remember where exactly it is. Plus, it gives me the opportunity to see how much I like my character build using pistols and swords. I'll probably really like the pistols later on. I do plan to kill, as you've already possibly seen, more, a lot more enemies with our sword than with the pistol. But the pistol does give me something to do if I'm netted or rooted. It also gives me something to do in case I want to draw the enemies around a corner out of line of sight. And we will go ahead and charge the other one. It should be safe for me to run a aground run a run aground? Run around that. There is a trap. Nice, all three hit. All right, well done. We get a nine millimeter pistol barrel as well. All right, let's go ahead and search the vents. Get access to a few rooms. I think there's food in one of the desks we're gonna find, if I recall correctly. So I've been so lazy, everyone. A year ago, I was planning to make a tutorial, a FAQ, a this is how <coughs> things you should think about when making a character for Underrail, <coughs> as well as showing some of the, some useful tips for the first parts of the game. I've never done it. What the sad part is, I'll, I'll even show you. I have all these tutorials saved, ready to give examples and walk people through how things work. Like how traps work, how character creation works, how crafting works and stuff like that. But I haven't, I've just been too lazy to actually go ahead and make it. It's gonna be a lot of work to do it. Normally when I record, I don't have any outline or anything to guide me through talking about things. In this instance, I'm going to want to write everything down so I can sound intelligent as I give examples and describe certain aspects of the game. That requires a lot of work. That requires a lot of work. And I suppose a part of me... Did, well, I... Let me think about this. I was about to say something that I don't think is actually, is actually true. So... I'm not popular, everyone. I'm not a popular YouTube channel. And I don't I don't want to be a popular YouTube channel. But I'm a little that's not worried is the right is the right word to describe it. If even two people watch the video, Tim, and it helps them make a character and appreciate what a game under rail is, I think it would be helpful to make it after all. So it, my thoughts are, okay, this is <laughs> If I put in, a, like, a, it's not going to be 100 hours. That's that's ridiculous. But it's, it's going to be close to at least 40 hours to create this video series. Because it's going to be several videos I'm going to be making. It's going to be at, probably at least two or three. Because in addition to showing some of the basic aspects of the game that I feel would be very helpful in explaining, I want to show how to deal with certain enemies. For example, I've got... Where is it? Burrowers. And I think I have, yeah, crawlers, for example, right? Because burrowers will slaughter you if it's or if you're not used to fighting them. And in particular, how horrifically important it is to use a shield. A shield takes away most of the difficulty of dealing with burrowers. And then there's crawlers. And crawlers were something I found to be amazing. What a wonderful enemy they are to fight. How tricky they are. And I don't want to... I actually don't want to do this area from here. We have no room to maneuver. Which means we have to stay and slug it out with those enemies. Now, I might want a little bit of space. Oh, although if you do fight there, Tim, you can't be surrounded. What's the worst that happens? We get a bunch of acid tossed on you. But you'll be wearing this. Okay, we'll try it. We'll try it. 
Okay, so, there are, I think, five dogs, and I want to say one or two mutants on the other side of this. The final mutants, and I think the final area we have to worry about here in Depot A. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is it. So, if we defeat all of them, I will consider Blade a success. And so far, we've been doing pretty well. Open the door. Wait a few seconds. All right. Let's do it. Step outside. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to get a mutant right away. We're going to get all of them right away. That's two good hits. Oh, look at the dog. I, I actually I have not looked at the dog, the mutated dog's portrait before. It looks kind of creepy. Its eyes are glowing green. So I can run out, we can try killing that dog, and then we sprint back inside. Let's do that. Nice! All three hit. And I don't, and I don't even need to sprint. We can just move back. I think the dog's going next. Good. That means the mutant can't reach me. Yep, it'll have to acid spray. I'm okay with that. That's less damage than, than we would have taken. We're going to take the morphine shot, or a morphine shot, to help us here. Nice. All three hit again. Down goes the dog. And that's good. So the only thing I have to worry about is being entangled by the dog spit. Wow. Oh, missed. We'll take that adrenaline. I want it dead. My flurry was extremely handy there, I think. We are healing ourselves because our morphine is about to expire. We can take extra damage, and that's it. I think that that does it. Holy crap, we did it! I didn't even need to go back to get more bandages. Let's reload, repair my equipment. Oh, I have an electronics repair kit. Oh, I don't have any electronics. Okay, all right, not bad, huh? I think that was all of it. First of corpses. Oh, we took a lot of damage just walking through that. Our armor is down one fourth, so it's beginning. Our armor is no longer protecting us 100% against the acid, so we're going to start taking damage from it. So I was planning on throwing the Molotov there as well to help us in case I I did I missed more often than I did. But we did really, really well there. Flurry did not miss nearly as often as I thought it was going to miss. <coughs> I know there's at least, yep, one mine in this room. I think there's a second. Actually, no. The second is inside this room. Just on the inside of that door. And where does this lead? I want to check to make sure I did explore everything. Locked, and we've explored that area. Okay, yes, that's it, everyone. Depot A is complete. All done. Well, almost done. Technically, there's a handful of traps we have to navigate through. Well, I'm not expecting there to be any issues. And this is what I'm here for. That armadillo class drill rotator circuit board. Not quite leveled with that three point oddy item. And we want to be a little careful on the walk back, Tim. Why not use some stuff back? 
surely nothing bad will happen like a horrific disease by us eating a bat. <laughs> Come on, where's, where's my traps? There's one trap behind us. That makes me nervous. There's another. There's at least two more in this area. One's over in that area. Do I have any of those flares I said I didn't want? I do. Well, I didn't quite go where I wanted. Okay, I think I'm done. I don't, uh, do we have the key for this? And I don't need to pay a visit to that guy. He can stand there at the moment. I might come back and kill him, actually. We'll see. All right, so. All completed, everyone. Mission successful. Oh. <laughs> oh. All right, we have to walk the long way to get, to get back out of this area. Fine. So be it. We'll walk through the area. I've already searched for traps, though. So. Yeah, so the build kind of works. Uh, Okay, those dogs are inside this this that building. And they're named spitting dogs. They are not hostile unless you anger the gentleman inside of there as well, who himself is not hostile. He has a lot of hit points, though. I remember try Oh, didn't we try to kill him with Gabriel? I think we did. I tried, I tried to intimidate. It didn't work out. You know? Come back here and kill him and see what he has. I think he has a special pistol. The only way for us to get out of here will be to walk back up to this room and take that ladder. So something else Depot A tries to teach you. Well, is this true? I guess technically not, depending upon how you build your character. But you're really hurting yourself if you don't do it. Is you, you'll want to, your character needs to be, well, that is need the right word? I, I find that you will do well in Underrail if you make combat-focused characters. If your character cannot hold himself well in a fight, then Deep Away will show this ugly truth to you. And it's a good test to determine if your character will survive the later areas that you will be exploring in. In particular, uh, it's because it tries to teach you how how armor works, for example, and how that there's traps around that you might want some detection and stuff of this sort. It's important that you pass those tests because you you don't learn them. Oh, it's going to be really tough. Very very tough. Most, well, not most. That's the wrong term. Many people. Reach Depot A, and I believe I mentioned it several times, and that's where their character dies. I failed Depot A, I think, I want to say, three times? Three of my characters, my, my very first characters to reach Depot A, were unable to successfully complete it. It was too tough. I didn't understand the importance of certain armors and resistances the very first time, and my character skill points were too scattered. The second time, uh... Still the same thing. A little better, I got a little further in, but the mutants and dogs still killed me. Although the muties I survived against, and so did the robots. The third character still couldn't do it. It was because of my, my, my build was pretty good, but my resistances were too poor. And the fourth character, I finally, it all clicked together. And it all, finally I understood it. I understood what the game was trying to teach me. If it, it's a very harsh teacher. It reminds me of when I was learning karate ages ago. I don't know. I don't know any of it now. But they would have you block, and the guy would have this bamboo sword, and he'd swing it down at your head. He wouldn't actually hit hit us. We were we were kids, like ten. You know, it's a bad idea to hit a kid, ten year old kid in the head in the head with this with a with bamboo sword. But we we needed to block it, or we get a little a little whack. And so, it hurt hurt a lot. But it was teaching you. Teaching you the importance of being able to successfully block. And this game teaches you the importance of successfully managing to do deep away. That teaches you armor. Teaches you zoning, in case you actually want to use zoning. Teaches you the importance of different um, enemies' line of sight. Lake Poppy's back. So to end this, end this session, we're going to go ahead and fight some siphoners. I think they're back. 
Are they not back? Wow. I don't think they are. I wanted to end this showing Siphoner battles as well, because these things are also very tricky. Holy crap, it's been like two and a half hours, and they're still not respawning. I guess the game doesn't want you farming them before Depot A. They will respawn. You can clear this area of them multiple times. But not today. Alright, everyone. Well, that'll do it for us, then. Thank you guys for watching. Looks like Blade is a success. That was a lot of fun. I think his build's okay. I'll definitely find out later on as I continue to level it whether or not guns was a good idea, but... I've played so many characters who have just, like, a single focus, like, you know, just swords, or just melee, or just range. I really like playing hybrids. This is especially true because I find it's a little more difficult to play through hybrids. And normal is very tough, but I don't... I find it hard to be where a lot of my fun builds just die. <laughs> and I don't... Uh... I don't want to min-max my characters. I find that I don't have a lot of fun playing those types of those types of characters. So, no, that's not for me. And so hybrids let me branch out. They keep the game more difficult because my points are kind of scattered. But yet, because of I've learned the, how the game mechanics work, I can still make a decent hybrid character and beat the game. All right, and I'm beginning to babble way too much. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the... Well, whatever the game, next game is. I'll probably do another Depot A run at some point. So maybe I'll see you guys then. Take care, everyone, and thanks again for watching.